Hey guys, welcome to uh, the Garden Drinks Paint Along. Uh, my name is Allie. Um, if you are new here and you haven't joined me for one of my weekly paint alongs, let me just say welcome. I'm glad that you found me today, uh, whenever and wherever you are watching this from. Um, I am here every Monday at 5 Eastern and I do these live demos uh, where I teach something a little bit different. Um, I do my demos on a small 8x10 panel and I offer a download for those of you that are interested in painting with me. I have a download that gives you these outlines that you can trace and put on your 8x10 panel so that you can paint right along with me. So many of you guys are doing that with me right now um, as you are coming into the demo and um, jumping in. Please say hello in the comments. Let us know if you are painting along today. I love seeing that. Um, and if you're not painting along right now, um, don't worry, you can still get that download and you can watch this video as a replay anytime. So you can watch those on my Facebook page, um, under the videos tab, or you can um, watch on my YouTube channel. They get posted to my YouTube channel on Tuesdays. So you can also find it there. Hi, Dawn. I'm glad to see you're painting along. So we started a new series today. Hi, Amy. Um, We've been doing florals and I thought we'd change it up uh, for these um, next few weeks of summertime. It is warm here in Chattanooga today and I thought it would be fun to do a summer cocktail series. So um, today we are doing, uh, this one's called the Garden Drinks um, Paint Along and I believe that this image that we're painting is a cinnamon mint julep, I think. I'm not positive. Um, sometimes I get my images from a free photo sharing website called Unsplash. So this comes from a photographer on that website. And then I did some editing to it to make it look more like how I wanted my painting to be. Um, hi, Robin. Um, so I think it's a cinnamon mint julep, but I'll, I'll post that recipe if I can find it somewhere. Um, and then we're gonna do three more weeks of um, cocktails through the month of June and I'm taking the month of July off. So I hope that you'll join me in June because um, we're gonna take a little break from paint alongs in July. I'm gonna be doing some summer stuff with my kids. So we're gonna just, um, yeah, we're gonna have some fun here in June and maybe next week I'll, I'll actually have the cocktail that I'm painting. That would be nice and I'll share a recipe. That would be cool too. All right, so should we get started guys? All right, okay, so. Here is the image, and I'm just getting my camera set up so that you can see my reference image. You can see some of my palette, hopefully. I know y'all like to see my mixing. Um, hi, Janet. All right, okay, that looks pretty good. So we've got the outlines on here, and I trace the outlines um, using a sheet of transfer paper. If you don't have transfer paper, you can always just color the back of the sheet that you print, um, get like some graphite or some chalk on there, and you can use that and trace over it to get your outlines on. And then I always have you uh, paint over those outlines with a skinny little script liner brush like this in a light shade of purple. Um, just to cover up those outlines so we don't see like that graphite line. Um, hi Elena in North Carolina, you're painting wonderful. Um, okay, and so I made this purple from white, alizarin crimson, and Payne's gray. And I should tell you, we I am using golden fluid acrylics for this demo. That's what I teach um, all my demos with. And if you did get the download or you're thinking about it, um, the download has a list of all of the paint colors that I will be using so that if you do want to invest in some golden paints, um, you don't have to waste your money getting paints that you won't use uh, because I only use about eight colors, I think, eight or nine colors um, and that I can make any color I want with. Um, hi, Sharon in Clifton, Tennessee. Nice to see you. All right, so this is how I pretty much start every demo. Um, I start with the outlines and then I start washing in the shadows. Uh, so that's where we're at right now. And I'm going to make a purple. Um, 
And you might notice my palette is all different colors and that's because I don't clean my palettes. I just let them get uh, really thick and then you can actually just peel this paint right out. Um, so that's why most of the time when you're seeing my palette, it's already lots of different colors. <laughs> um, that's kind of what I like about these paint palettes is you don't have to clean them. You just let them get all full and thick and then you peel it right out and it comes out clean. All right, so I'm just making a very watery puddle here of this purple, alizarin crimson and Payne's gray. If you don't have those colors exactly, don't worry. Just, you know, make yourself kind of a dark purple. And we're going to start looking at the shadows. So I'm gonna compare which side of the line is light, which side is dark. So I'm gonna start with the areas that I notice first as being the darkest in my painting. Um, so if I look, I can see the background here on the right side is pretty dark and that's going to make um, this little mint leaf here stand out. So we're just gonna start pushing that background dark. And this paint's very, very thin and watery and that's what allows me to get it to really move nicely. So this is all considered the underpainting. Um, and we do this, we build up this roadmap of tones before we even start worrying about the color. Right now we're just looking at light and dark. Now it's gonna do something interesting here that I wanna point out. Here up at the top, the background is dark, the drink is light. But as we get down to the bottom, it flips, right? So now the drink is what's dark and the background is light. So I'm paying attention to those little subtleties um, and that's what makes my painting feel more realistic um, and more accurate by getting those lights and darks uh, in here accurately from the beginning. And then when I start layering in my color, I don't have to worry as much because I already kind of know where all the different shapes are. Um, and I should tell you, if you guys have questions, you are welcome to ask those um, in the comments. I am going to try to keep track here. I'm gonna pull up my sample um, so that I can see. I'm watching on my laptop. Okay, now I can see everybody, wonderful. Okay, so moving forward. Now let's look, we've got a dark shadow underneath this lime it actually looks like a lemon i don't know if that's i think it is a lime though i think it just picked up some more yellow tones um when i put a filter on the photo so if you don't know my process you might not know how i get the image to look like it does um because this is clearly not how it looked just as the photo but i do a lot of editing to my photos to um, kind of simplify the forms and make it easier to see the lights and darks Make, I like to make my painting process easier for myself um, and for you. So I do some different editing techniques to my images. And sometimes it will pull out some strange colors, like it might make a lime look like a lemon, but you can always correct that kind of stuff. And if you are interested in learning more about those editing techniques, I actually put together an online class. It's called Digital Editing Basics, and I teach all my tricks for painters to learn how to use Photoshop and PixArt um, and some other programs, mostly Photoshop and PixArt though, um, to help make uh, reference images for paintings, really because um, there's so much to learn in those programs, but I just designed a class to teach you what I feel like you need to know as a painter. So that's where you can learn more about how I edit. All right, so I am just moving along looking for the dark shapes. So this is a dark edge of this lime right here, so I'm catching that. I'm using a flat tip brush. It's a number three. Um, and I don't buy very expensive brushes, but I do like to have a nice new clean brush. If your brushes are starting to split, it's time to let them go and get yourself a new brush because you can't, you can't work a brush that's splitting on you. You can't get nice juicy brush strokes if your brush keeps splitting in half and leaving weird lines. That's just frustrating. And we don't need that. 
Okay, um, we've got a dark leaf right here. So I'm just looking for these large dark shapes and I am washing them in. Just kind of bouncing my way around, comparing which side of the line is light, which side is dark. So here, like the center of, or this part of the leaf is very dark and then it flips. Just so like we were talking about where the leaf is really light here and now the background is dark behind it. Um, and another little trick you can do if you're working on your own um, is to look at your image in a black and white. That will help you to not get hung up on the colors of things and just really focus on lights and darks. So this stick here, uh, the cinnamon stick, it's dark on the left side, light on the right. And so the background behind the left side is pretty dark, but I'm gonna leave like a little window of light just to help separate those forms. And they'll be further separated when we start doing color, but um, sometimes you just kind of have to leave a little bit so that your image doesn't blend together. We don't want that stick to get mixed up with the background. That's starting to look like a cocktail. It's making me thirsty. <laughs> um, I think, so I haven't, uh, I haven't shared what we're painting next week, but that will come out tomorrow. Um, it should. And I usually send the email out on Fridays to all of my email friends with the link to download whatever we're te whatever I'm teaching the next week. So if you're on my email list, that's when you would get it is on Friday. Um, if you're not on my email list, you can join that on my website. Um, and then you'll always know about these and get the links. Um, but I, I will next time, I'm gonna pick something that I can share a recipe because I think that would be kind of fun. We could all enjoy our cocktail as we paint. Maybe your paintings would be a little bit looser, huh? <laughs> okay. We're getting pretty close to having that first layer of wash done, I think. So this is kind of like a watercolor layer. This, you know, we're leaving our whites as the white of the um, board. And we're just painting in the darks. Okay, so now we are going to come back with another pass of the same color recipe. But now we're going to push the darkest areas a little bit darker. So this again was alizarin crimson and Payne's gray. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of those two colors and now just have a little less water in my recipe. And kind of scrape the edges of my brush to offload it so that it's not dripping down. And then I can come back and just kind of catch the tip and get the paint that I want. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back and look for those very darkest areas. So again, we, we talked about how it's the darkest in the background here. So as we pull this second layer in, you can see how that creates a lot more depth, pushing that even darker. It separates it from the other layers. Um, and we're gonna do the same thing, kind of going around the leaf that we mentioned that's really bright at the tip there. And um, I talk about this a lot, but I don't ever buy black paint. And I know I always like to mention it because we don't have, you know, we have new people all the time. Um, and I find no reason to buy black. Um, I think black is flat and dull. Um, so for my dark areas in my painting that look black to me, I'm doing this dark purple. It just, it's prettier, it's richer, and I like using the Alizarin Crimson and Payne's Gray because they're both kind of a little bit more neutral forms of red and blue. Um, and so when you combine them together, it makes a little bit more of like a duller tone, but it's still, uh, you know, it's still purple. So it's still prettier than just plain old black.
So we got a little bit of a black edge or dark edge here on this on that lime. Um, nowhere else do I see a dark. I guess it's kind of dark around this rim. So I will say that I do like to have my paintings be loose. I like to show the brush strokes, but whenever you're painting something that is like a vase or a glass, something with a perfect sphere, you need to get that sphere perfect. So this line, you have to be careful as you're painting it. Because if, if I were to like cut in too far, if that circle looks wonky, then everybody's gonna know that something's wrong, something's off. You know, if I'm sloppy in the background back here, nobody will know the difference. Um, so things like that you really do have to pay attention to. Um, it's kind of like when I'm painting a portrait, you know, when I'm doing the eyes, I get very specific because I know it's really important to get those features just right. And if I made somebody's eyes look slightly different shaped, than what they really are, then it wouldn't look like that person anymore. It's kind of the same thing with, with something like a, a round glass or vase. Um, okay, it's a little bit darker down here. And speaking of that, I noticed after creating this template and putting it on my panel, I feel like my image is maybe just one little degree tilted to the right. Um, so I'm going to try to compensate for that as I'm painting and kind of tip it back this way by carving in a little bit on the sides. So if you've noticed that on yours, if you've already transferred your outlines, that maybe this should have been tipped a hair that way. Um, don't worry, we will kind of work our way through to correct that angle. And if you haven't transferred your outlines, maybe, maybe you want to just turn your paper a tiny bit um, to make that a little bit more straight up and down, but it's it's really close. It's just, I'm kind of nitpicky. <laughs> All right. Do this a little darker back there. Okay, we're almost done with putting these shadows in, and then it's gonna be time for the underpainting wash. So I don't really see any super dark tones in through here, so I'm not even gonna come back with that next darkest pass up there. Um, maybe I'll just push it a little bit more there. Okay, so now we're going to do a wash. We're going to do a complementary color wash. Um, over everything that we've done. So you want to make sure that this purple layer is totally dry before you wash over it. Um, this acrylic paint dries pretty quickly, so it's usually not much of a concern. Um, but if, if yours is still wet, you might need to just kind of blot it a little bit, um, make sure that any drips aren't gonna pull off. Um, and then we'll talk about what colors we want to use for our complements. So it's not always the true complement. Complement means opposite on the color wheel. Um, but basically, if I have a color like this background that's going to be blue, which is a cool color, I will lay down a very warm color first, and then I'll layer my cool colors on top of it. Um, so for my warm color, I think I'm going to do my burnt orange recipe that I like. And I make burnt orange from alizarin crimson, enhanced the yellow, opaque. Janet says it's that engineer mind that makes you see the angle. That's funny, Janet. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> My husband's an engineer and we have very different minds, but um, <laughs> yeah, I guess some things I'm precise about. Hi, Judy. Thank you for sharing this demo. Um, the rest of you, if you are enjoying this demo, if you wouldn't mind hitting that share button, I always greatly appreciate it um, because it allows new people to find me and it allows me to keep doing these demos totally free for you every week. I know I'm taking July off, but otherwise I will be back strong um, in August. So I always appreciate it when you share it. So thank you very much. 
All right, so this burnt orange, again, is alizarin crimson and Hansa yellow opaque. And I just have it watered down and I'm just washing right on top of the shadows that I put down and I'm being messy with it. I'm not being careful. And the reason, one reason I like to use this color is you see how we're gonna see the same color in the drink. So by putting an underpainting of it in the background, it's kind of, it's kind of like playing a little game. We're gonna have like little bits of this poking through. Um, and so it'll be fun to see that color in the background and in the drink. Thank you, Elena, for sharing. Yeah, let me know, guys, if you share, just put it in the comments so I can say thank you, because I appreciate it. All right, so as we get down, I'm gonna make my background underpainting a little bit lighter um, because the background is lighter up in front. It's darker in the back. So I kind of pay attention to that as I'm putting in the underpainting. Now, before I go all the way down, I think I'm gonna play around with it a little bit and I'm gonna put a little bit of a different color down at the bottom. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of pyrrole red just for the heck of it. Um, which is gonna be a little more vibrant. I'm gonna wash some of that in down here. If you've already put your burnt umber all the way down, don't worry about it, you can put this right over it. I just kinda like to play around with the background. I had that really watered down. I might have to come back with another pass. Okay, thank you Janet for sharing the demo. All right, so now let's figure out what, what let's figure out what color we're going to do the green limes. So opposite of um, green is red, and so I think maybe we'll go back to that um, pyrrole red and put that under the um, the limes. Yeah, I think we'll do that, and we'll do that under the leaves too. Um, so we'll just go right over with watered down pyrrole red light this is. If you only have pyrrole red, that's fine too, but I like pyrrole red light because it's a little bit more orangey. So we're gonna go over the slime. So pretty much most of the top of the glass is going to be ultimately green tones. So I think we're just going to wash all of that in. Why not? Okay, so this is going to be green. This leaf is going to be green. We don't have a lot left that won't be green that we're going to put in red first. Okay, so this color that is um, going to be kind of like that warm reddish brown. I don't, so if we called that orange, um, we could make purple be the opposite of that. I think that's what we'll do. So I think uh, I'm going to use permanent violet dark as my underpainting for that liquid in the cocktail, whatever it is. And if you don't have permanent violet dark, because I've heard from a few people it's tricky to get, you can um, make it using quinacridone magenta with a little bit of any blue, like phthalo blue, ultramarine blue. So you can mix those to get what you're looking for. Okay, so we're gonna put this as our underpainting. I don't know, has anybody been able to find um, Permanent Violet Dark lately? And if you can, could you post the link here? Because I know a lot of people have been looking for it and would really appreciate it. I happen to have a big bottle of it right now, so I have not been looking. But um, yeah, if anybody has a good source online, everyone would appreciate it if you shared that. Hi, Laura, thanks for sharing the demo. Okay, so we've got our purple wash in now, which maybe was a little thin. I might have to make that a bit darker, but it's too wet right now. Come back with a little more 
paint. All right. Okay, so now we start actually creating the painting with the colors that are actually in the painting. <laughs> um, so we want to be layering over our underpainting and we wanna make sure that the underpainting is dry um, as we're layering. And now we're not going to thin our paint with water anymore. I'm going to thin it with glazing medium. I'm using Liquitex matte medium, but I'm not picky about brands. You could use any brand. Um, and the reason for that is the medium keeps kind of the thickness of the paint. It makes it so it's not runny, um, but it, it gives it some transparency to let the underpainting show through. So let's start with the blue up at the top. Um, I think I'm going to make that with um, Payne's gray and a little bit of white but I'm tempted to push it a little to the purple side. I feel like that might be pretty. So I'm gonna put a little bit of permanent violet dark in there. I think that'll look nice with the colors we've got going. And then I'm gonna add some of my glazing medium. So it's permanent violet dark, Payne's gray, titanium white, and some medium. And I'm going to put this in my very darkest areas. And I'm going to be intentional about leaving some windows of my underpainting poking through. I think I want a little more violet in there. I think that's gonna be pretty. Yeah. There's this little tiny triangle of it right here between, it's the background where the leaf is coming over. I just wanna put that in. Okay, then there's a little bit of dark blue that is that dark over here, but then it does get a little bit lighter and I think I want maybe right here. Yeah, I wanna start pushing it a little bit lighter. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it and that, well, that really lightened it up. I need to get a little more paint spray, I think. So we're adding a little more white to it, so it's still Payne's Gray, permanent violet dark, a little bit of glaze, but we're just lightening it up a little bit. That'll be good. Scraping the edge of my brush on the palette, coming back with just the tip, and I'm gonna put some color in there, and you see how I'm kinda like twisting my brush and changing the direction? Also, I'm kind of letting it skip sometimes across the palette. You see those little bits of the, the burnt orange coming through. I think that's all okay, that's fun. Um, and look at how big of a brush I'm using. I'm using a number nine um, square tip brush. So I always like to stress, if you are filling in a large area on your painting, don't use a little brush. If you can fit big, big brush strokes in there with a big, Brush like this, just do it. Okay, so now as we come down, the background gets lighter, but I'm gonna use this color in the shadow down at the bottom. Let me get that in while it's on my brush. Okay, now I'm gonna lighten it a little bit more. Add some more white in there. And a little more medium, maybe a little more white. Okay. Okay, be careful not to cover up too much of that underpainting. Okay, um, yeah, I like that, do one going up. Okay, we might do some more in the background, but for right now, we've got kind of a nice basis going um, in the background, and we can start layering our drink colors in. 
have to get a little drink myself. I'm drinking LaCroix, which is nowhere near as much fun, but. <laughs> All right. So let's start painting the actual cocktail. Um, where do I wanna start? I think I want to start um, with uh, the green that's like the inside of the limes, the lighter green, because um, I think covering up some of these large areas of red will be helpful. Um, and so I'm gonna switch my brush down a little bit because I think this nine is too big. So I will go down to my five. I would normally use a seven, but I all of my sevens are all junky, so I need to get some better ones, but this will be good. Um, okay, so the inside of the lime, that's, it's not very green. It's actually kind of muted. Um, so we're going to make it, let's see, we're going to make it with tiny speck of phthalo green blue shade. I'm going to find a clean spot. That's not clean. Over here. This is clean. <laughs> phthalo green and then we're gonna need some white my white is clogged okay phthalo green white we're gonna put some Hansa yellow opaque in there and now this green's super bright and we need to neutralize that a little bit so we are going to add a little bit of that pyrrole red in there to knock it down. Maybe a little more yellow. So red will always kind of cancel your green out, make it so it's not too crazy green. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of medium in there to thin it out as well. I don't know if that was too much yellow, we'll see. Okay, so I'm gonna offload my brush by scraping the edge of my palette, come back with just kind of the tip, and start dropping this in. So let's see here. We wanna make sure we don't cover up all the red. I'm gonna add a little more glaze in there. So I really want that red to poke through. I think it's gonna be really neat. Okay, we're just gonna put that much in that one for right now, then move over here, kind of looking at the direction of the, the inside of the fruit, how it's got the different sections that are kind of going towards the middle. Well, the bottom edge of the inside of this piece is darker than up there. You see the difference? Yeah, it's dark there, it's light up there. So I think I need to offload my brush a little bit more and grab a little more glaze to thin out. I can still maybe use the same color, but I'm gonna thin it like a whole bunch with glaze and just come in with a little thin wash of it there really thin. And you can see how that section looks darker now. Okay, then I'm going to go back to the color I was using. Oh, let's see, Marcella says, looks like a face on the glass. Yeah, I guess it did like the nose and two eyes. <laughs> I can see that. I don't know if it'll stay that way, but for right now. Okay, um, so we've got some chunks of bright green up here and we could probably use the same bright green to pull out the edge of that leaf. I might adjust the color a little bit later, but for right now, we'll just start to build up a little green on this leaf and kind of catch that highlight on the edge. Um, start putting a little on the center of that one. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so now I would like to go in and find the darker green edges of the limes because I think placing those will help us to kind of make sense a little bit more of what we've got going on. So that darker green, um, and it's gonna be different shades because here it's very dark on that one and on the other ones it's lighter. We're gonna, we're gonna start with the dark, I guess. We'll find that darkest one because then we can always lighten it. So let's make that dark olive green um, and we'll make that from phthalo green blue shade and some Hansa yellow opaque. And then we need to dull it down with some pyrrole red and a little more yellow, a little more red. I'm not going to put any white in this for right now. So this is just going to be pyrrole red light Hansa yellow opaque and phthalo green blue shade. Put a little glaze in there. So this is making a nice dark olive green. And I'll put this in my darkest edges here of the limes. So that's a dark edge. Now up at the top, let's see, where do we see any, we have a dark edge right here, just a tiny one and maybe a little bit on the edge of this piece right here and a little on this corner. Now the rest of the greens are lighter. So while I have this on my brush though, I'm going to use it to build up the dark greens in the mint leaves. Just to get some color on those. Pretty dark here. And we've got these little leaves over here in the foreground. And maybe I'll just put a little dark edge on this, this one down here. Okay, now we're gonna lighten it. So we're gonna get the rest of the edges um, by adding a little bit of white to this recipe that we've got and a little more yellow. Hansa Yellow Opaque is a really great yellow because it works really well to lighten colors because it is opaque, so it packs a nice punch. That's why it's the only yellow that I buy. I think it's the only yellow you need. You can make it go more lemon, you can make it go warmer, you can just push it however you want. So it's a great um, yellow to invest in from Golden. All right. So I just added more white and yellow to that same recipe and I'll use this for the other edges. And we'll put some of that into the leaf, the leaves as well. Got an edge right there. You might wanna switch down to a smaller brush. I'm still using my five, but I can see where you might wanna to switch to like three or even a one if you're having trouble kind of getting into some of these smaller edges. Um, I'm gonna put this down here around this one and put some bright green down at the bottom. Okay. Oh, we've got this one other one that we see the side of right here. Okay, now in between the center of the fruit there and the, the um, peel, there's like the white edge, right? So we need to address that, I think. Um, and so I'm gonna need to get a smaller brush to do that. <laughs> I need to go down to my number one. And that, that white edge is not actually white. It's actually more like the green that we put in the center, just a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna go back to that same original puddle and just put more white in it. So if you don't have any more of that, that original puddle was phthalo green, blue shade, Hansa yellow, opaque, 
titanium white and pyrrole red light. And now we're just adding more white to it to lighten that up. All right, so I see this it's easiest to find it like right here. Then it gets a little darker. Um, and this one's a little bit darker too, but I'm gonna offload my brush a little, put this white in. Remember to leave those little bits of red poking around. All right. Now, I don't really see it right at the edge here. I think it's because it's so dark. Um, I do see some light highlight coming in right here that I'm just going to drop in. Um, and then we've got a highlight right here. Not really sure what this highlight is. Maybe that's an ice cube right here. I can't tell. We don't really need to know. We're just gonna paint it how we see it. Okay. And that white ring on this one down in front is pretty dark up here. It's kind of bright at the edge here. So I'll just drop a little bit of it in right there and then it needs to get darker. Um, Janine says she's painting live. Yay. You're going to finish it tomorrow. That's great. I love it. Okay. So now let's see what other colors are we missing? We've got like some dark kind of golden tones in this one. And some of those same colors are going to show up down on this one. So let's make that dark gold. Um, we will do that with Hansa yellow opaque and we'll use some, a tiny bit of phthalo green and some pyrrole red. I'm gonna need more Hansa yellow opaque. So it's actually gonna be like the same colors we were using for the olive green, but now we're gonna use a little bit more of the red and yellow and very little of the green. And I'll thin it with a little glaze. So I actually don't have any white in this recipe right now. This is just a nice golden tone and I'm gonna drop that into these shadows. Covering up some of those little veins that I put in in my underpainting. I might pull those out later, but for right now, I don't really think I need to put them in. I'm just gonna put that gold tone in. And I see some of that down towards the bottom of this one. I'm gonna darken that a little bit. Um, and then we see that down in here, this one. This one gets brighter over on the right side. So maybe I'll add a little white and yellow over there. So I'm gonna add a little white to it. Maybe a little more yellow. And that might be too yellow. Yeah, that's, looks good. Okay, I just wanna brighten that section. All right, good for now. So I like to kind of work my way around the whole painting before I get too hung up on anything. So that's why I'm not gonna keep going with that. Um, okay, so we've got these large areas of red that are left right here. If we look at the painting, it's kind of like a neutral color because I do think that might be an ice cube. Um, so we're going to make that kind of like a purple color. And actually, I think we could use some of the color that we put in the background here to put some of that in, but maybe add a little more white. So if you remember that background color was Payne's gray and permanent violet dark and white. You don't have any left on your palette I'm gonna scoop up what's on my palette and just add a little more white to it and I think it might work for me so that's Payne's gray permanent violet dark and white 
And I'm going to, I think I need a little more violet and Payne's gray in there. Maybe it was a little too, I went a little too bright. Because we want these shadows to be darker than this highlight we put down. works and put a little up there and do I see some of it moving over here yeah okay and I can use this for that rim of the glass so remember I talked about being very specific about the rim let's use this color to catch that little bit of rim that's showing and we're only gonna do what we see we're not gonna paint it how we think we should see it only gonna paint it how we see it. That looks good. Looks like this needs to get trimmed down a little bit because right now my rim looks too small for my glass. So maybe I need to push it out a little more. I'm breaking my own rule right now. Okay. And I'm gonna pick up some of that color right here. It's going to cut right through this one and we'll put some in the background here. As we come down, this color gets lighter and a little more pink. So let's, for that color, let's make a new recipe. Um, let's do white and some alizarin crimson. I think some Payne's Gray. Yeah, a little bit of Payne's Gray. Maybe a little more of the Alizarin Crimson to warm that up. Okay, so this doesn't look that warm. I need to add, I'm gonna add a little bit of Pyrrole Red Light in there too. That's what I needed. I probably shouldn't have used the alizarin crimson. I should have just used the pyrrole red light. We'll try this. Doesn't actually look that different from the purple we've already put down. Let me get a little in there. Okay, so now our drink needs to start looking more um, more reddish down here. So I need my bigger brush, I think. I'm gonna go back to my three. And because this is like a large area to start filling in. Uh, Mary sees a face too. <laughs> All right, well, you know, I have the reference image, I see the face, so I don't know that we're gonna get away from that, but it's okay. <laughs> um, okay, so this color we're going to make with Pyrrole Red Light, a little bit of white, a little bit of Hansa Yellow Opaque, and we'll do a little bit of Payne's Gray in there to tone that down. A tiny bit of Payne's Gray, like hardly any. I put too much in. I roll red light, Hansa yellow, opaque. I'm just adding more of the other colors to knock down that Payne's gray because I put too much in there. We want this to be like a kind of orangey peach tone. Let's see how it looks when I drop it in. Yeah, I think, I think it's good. Okay, and then it gets darker as it goes down towards the bottom. Remember not to cover up all of the purple. And okay, as we go down, we've got a little highlight right here that I'm gonna add. I see some of it down here in the little rim. Okay, now we wanna make it darker. And so we're going to add more Pyrrole Red Light. 
and more of the Hansa yellow. We're gonna add more of everything except for the white now, I think. And a tiny speck of that Payne's gray. Darken it a bit, make it a little bit more brown. And let's see how this looks. Maybe a little more Payne's gray. Drop that color in. Is that gonna be good? Maybe. It's gonna get even darker. I need to put the other side of this leaf in that's throwing me off right now. But for, I think that's good right now. Okay, then we'll do the darkest um, color in the glass. And I actually see some purple reflections going on in there and I think that's pretty cool. So let's make a new color for my dark. Let's do permanent violet dark and a little bit of white and some pyrrole red. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Okay, permanent violet dark, pyrrole red light, and a little bit of white. I'm gonna use that to put this dark shadow in. I like that. My other, my other colors were a little bit too wet. I might have to wait for those to dry. Let's go do something else while we wait for those to dry. Um, so, Let's finish the other side of this leaf that's missing there. I forgot, maybe maybe you already put your other side of the leaf in, but mine's missing. So I need to go back to my green color. I'm gonna go back to this color I used for the outside edges. Um, and that was Hansa Yellow Opaque, Phthalo Green Blue Shade, Pyrrole Red Light, and White. I gotta put some of that green in. I'm gonna to need to brighten it up yet, but I'm just gonna drop it in for right now and then I'll come back and brighten it. Okay. Got a few little windows of, okay. So this leaf up at the top, I wanna to make more of like a true mint um, green highlight because right now I did sort of the same colors that I put on the limes and so it's not really looking all that different. So I'm going to um, I'm gonna make more of a minty green. So I'll make a minty green using phthalo green blue shade. Super, super strong phthalo green blue shade some white and a little bit of yellow, fancy yellow opaque. Lots of white because that phthalo green blue shade is so strong. Hi Donna, thanks for jumping into the demo. Okay, so this is much more of a minty green green and we'll use this for our mint leaf highlights. Yeah, I like that. See how bright that is? I think I need to go even brighter, a little more white. Yep, because this leaf looks like almost white in the image. So we need to paint it really bright. And we've got some little highlights on there. Put a little bit right there. Okay, and then, do I see that mint color anywhere else? Hmm, looking around, I think, I think, what do I wanna do? I'm gonna put a little on this leaf down at the bottom, even though it's really not quite that bright, I just wanna drop it in there as a little highlight. Just to kinda tie that in together, we'll do that one too, just to like balance that bright color out. And now as I'm looking at my glass, I see a pretty strong highlight right on the edge, this right rim right here, and it's almost white. Um, I'm gonna go back to this kind of purpley color that I had, I'm gonna add some more white to it. This purple was Payne's Gray 
and maybe a lizard and crimson. I can't remember. Any two colors that make purple will be fine. Just add a bunch more white to it. And we're gonna put like that bright edge of the rim there. If you guys have any requests for um, cocktail paintings, if you have any great photos of cocktails, um, would you share them in my group, Allie's Paint Friends, um, and tag me so that I see it? Because I would love to see your photos, and if I choose one of your photos, I give you the paint along download for free, um, and we get to paint your painting, which is or your photo, which is awesome. But make sure you only share photos that you have permission to share and paint. So don't share anything that you just find online. Um, and I would love to see what you have. I did take a great photo of my friend's Moscow mule the other night when we were out to dinner. Um, I was like the weird person at the pizza place taking pictures of my drink on the table, my friend's drink. Um, so I was like, leave it right there. I need a picture of this. So that turned out pretty good. Maybe we'll do that one. But I wanted something a little different because this that has limes. This one has limes. I want to do something that looks a little different for the next one. I think what this painting needs are some brighter yellowy green highlights. That's what I think. I also noticed that my rim is a little off. I went too far right here with my rim. I need to cut that in. And I'm gonna do that with some of my background color. So maybe you don't have that problem and you might not need to fix yours. Um, but I'm gonna go in and make a little bit of that background dark because otherwise that's gonna drive me crazy. Okay, so I just have to cut in with this. might need to do a little bit more with that, but I needed my glass to make more sense. <laughs> okay, now I can kind of bend my white highlight there and make it come in a little more. Brighten that highlight up a little bit. Yep, I like that. Um, Judith is asking, what drink is this one? So Judith, I think this is a cinnamon mint julep. That's, that's what it looks like to me anyways. Um, let's bring out the highlight right here on this leaf. I'm going to go back to my greens. I have my original light green, which I think this was, um, titanium white, Hansi yellow opaque, phthalo green, blue shade, and pyrrole red light. And I'm just gonna drop some of that onto this leaf to make this one stand out a little more like that. Okay, now I had mentioned I wanted to do some brighter like lime greens. So I want to get some bright white that's not contaminated. So I'm gonna squirt some in a new area on my palette and I'm gonna make a bright green using white, fancy yellow opaque and a tiny, tiny, tiny speck of phthalo green blue shade. Need more yellow. That phthalo green was just too much. More white. Okay, this, I think this color will be fun. So this is a pretty nice bright lime green. You can't see it, I'm gonna move my palette up. Okay, so I wanna do some little pops of this. That's nice. Put some on this leaf. Maybe we'll put a little in the center here. Kind of giving some indication of the little veins inside of that um, lime. You don't want to do like too much emphasis of those because then it looks kind of fake but we just want to give a little indication maybe did too much there already put a little down here
Okay. I think I need to brighten this white edge of this one because that is really bright and I haven't really put that in super bright yet. Um, thank you for Rana. All right, so let's go back to that white. Actually, we can use the same lime green we we're using. Let's just put a whole bunch of white in it. It'll be tinted just a little bit with the lime green, but we'll just dump a bunch of white in there. Okay, and now I'm pulling out those brightest white highlights. Yeah, I like that. So I like to save those brightest whites for towards the end because then they pop when they've got a nice base to sit on top of. We're gonna do this bright white here. If you put those bright whites in too early, it's like you've you've like played your trump card. Like you can't uh, you can't push it any further. Um, so you gotta save those. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna put the little center in there, right there. That'll be good. Maybe brighten that a little. Yeah, I like it. Okay, to where else? I'm kind of squinting now, comparing light and dark, looking at where else we need to um, push. Oh, I didn't put the reflection on the cinnamon stick. So I put it in pretty dark, but I wanna put the little highlight on the right side of it. And I'm going to do that with um, kind of like this color that I used in the drink. Um, so that was, let's see, it was Pyrrole Red Light White, maybe a little bit of Hansa Yellow Opaque in there. And I think I had a little Payne's Gray to dull it down. Let's do that, put that little bit in there. Yeah, that made a difference. I think I put mine in a little too fat. I might go back and adjust that, but it's okay. I need to, I can trim it with a little of my blue. Let's see, Judy says that bright color would look good on the base of the glass. Oh, you're right, Judy. What was I, th we missed that down here. We need that bright. Yeah, thank you. That's what I have you here for. Okay, so let's go back to that bright highlight. I just, it was right in front of me and I missed it. So that bright highlight was Payne's Gray, um, Alizarin Crimson and White. And yes, we need to drop that into the bottom. And then it gets darker on the right side. So we'll just kind of let that trail off. Yeah, perfect. And actually let's carve the outside edge of the glass a little too with some of that, because this gets pretty bright here. You know what though? I don't like that because it's, it's getting confused with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my background with my big brush and I'm going to add another layer of the blues in the background. So we were kind of working with this muted blue. I'm gonna make it a little bit more of a teal blue. So I'm gonna do um, titanium white. I'm gonna do a little bit of phthalo blue green shade which we have not used yet, but it's my, it's my pop blue. Phthalo blue green shade, titanium white, and now I'll put, uh, let's see, I'll put a little bit of a lizard and crimson in there. That'll mute it just a pinch. That'll make it a little more purpley. Yeah. And I'm gonna use this on top of that color. Oops, I went in a little too far. Okay, there we go. Because I want it to be separate. from this color. So I'm gonna cover this up. Okay, I'm gonna bring this into the background a little bit. 
So it makes sense. But I like how that brings the, the foreground towards us, I think. So now we have a little bit more drama from the foreground to the background. We've got it brighter in the foreground. I like that better. But yes, we definitely needed that little highlight down at the base of the glass there. Okay, we're getting close to the end of the demo. I always run a little bit over, um, but I think um, I think our drink needs a few more, like more intense peach colored pops kind of right around here. So right in here. Um, and so I'm going to make that with some pyrrole red light and some white and probably a little speck of Hansi yellow opaque. I need some clean white. Um, also, just a reminder that next week I am launching my brand new online class, um, Features and Faces. So if you have been waiting for a new portraits class, it is coming and I cannot wait to share it with you guys. So my, my online classes are different from paint alongs. In my online classes, I take you step by step with a photo and still frame of every single step, video of every step, color chart of every step, and they're amazing. And I am really excited to launch that class next week. So it's gonna launch June 17th. Um, and you can find it on my website, Allie K Studio. If you wanna get on the wait list, you can also get on the wait list um, on my website right now. And you can go over there and learn more about the class right now too, if you're interested in finding out uh, more information about that. So it's called Features and Faces and it will launch June 17th. Okay, so I made this bright peach with pyrrole red light, Hansi yellow opaque, and white. And we're gonna drop some nice, intense peach tones in this glass. Yes, that's what it needed. See how it just makes that pop because we've got that base of more muted colors? This is what it needed. And I wanna put a little of it up in the top too. Because I think I see it there. Maybe even in that. Yeah, I saw it in the lime. And over here, kind of breaking up some of those cool tones. Um, where else? Maybe a little bit right here. Okay, I think we might be almost there. It's down in here too. Oh, I didn't put the center of this one down here. I should do that. So I'm gonna do that with that cool purple color we were using before. Put that center in. I was a little bit off, but that's okay. All right, anything else I wanna do before we call this one done? I think I wanna pull the brightest whites out one more time. I'm gonna go back with straight white. So usually I leave that till the very, very end. I'm cleaning my brush off, getting all those other colors off. And then I'm gonna go back in with straight white. And I'm going to add that on the brightest areas. And I see that on this ice cube reflection. And right on the rim of the glass too. There. Can we see bright white anywhere else? Maybe down at the bottom here. Anywhere else. Maybe this little edge. I don't want to get carried away. I'm starting to get carried away. Somebody needs to stop me. Because it ruins it if you put too much of a color down. 
Oh, I want to just make this line not so like straight and weird. So <laughs> let's put a little bit of green reflection on the stem because I kind of see that. Um, so we're going to go back to an olive green that we'll make with um, phthalo green blue shade, pyrrole red light, tiny speck of fancy yellow opaque. So I'm gonna put this olive green, maybe right there, that's pretty dark. I think it was supposed to be the darkest towards the top and then get a little lighter at the bottom. So maybe I need a little bit of white in there, maybe a little more red. We'll try that. You guys can play around with what you wanna put here. Mm. You know what the problem is? This is like blending in with this edge of this one. So I need to put a pop of more of a real bright green here to separate those two. That's what I need to do. Let's see, Ellen says the top of the green leaf is pretty white. Oh, you're right, this one over here. Yeah, we'll do that too. Let's first fix this edge of this green. So I need to make more of a bright green. So I'm gonna do phthalo green blue shade, Fancy yellow, opaque, and a little bit of white. And let's see. I need to dull that just a tiny bit with some red, some pyrrole red light. But this green, yeah, is more of like a grass green, which I haven't actually used, but that is what's going to separate that. So again, this was phthalo green, blue shade, Hansa yellow, opaque, pyrrole red light, and a little bit of white. Yeah, that was the color we needed. It wasn't there yet. And there's probably a little bit of in this leaf too. Yep. Okay, and then it was mentioned that this leaf right here has some pretty much straight white, so I'll put a little dabble of that at the edge. Okay, I think we're gonna call it done. Um, <laughs> thank you, you like my curly hair, Ellen? <laughs> thank you, I appreciate it. All right, <laughs> thank you everyone who um, joined me for this demo. And if you would like to get the um, download, you can do that on my website, alliekstudio.com. Just look under instruction, online classes, and then paint alongs, and you will find all of my downloads. So if there are some other ones that interest you, you can go back and do those and watch the replay. Um, and so again, one last reminder, my online course Faces and Features comes out next week, June 17th is the day. It's next week, Thursday. We're going to be doing the uh, sample behind me here. I got to go this way. We're going to be doing this guy. Um, what else are we going to be doing? Do I have some others? We're going to be doing this woman. There are three full samples in this class, plus a ton of extra information. So I hope that you will um, check that course out. All right, thank you everybody. If you did this paint along, please share your painting in Allie's Paint Friends, my free Facebook group. Everybody loves to see uh, the pieces that you do. You guys are so talented and so awesome. And I love having you join me every week. So I'll see you next week. We have three more of these um, before we take a little break in July. All right, everybody have a great night. Take care.